Welcome to Science in Five. I'm Vismita Gupta Smith, and this is WHO's Conversations in Science. Many people experience several symptoms even after recovering from COVID 19. Here to talk about that is WHO's Dr. Janet Diaz. Welcome, Janet. Uh, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Janet, many people, even after they recover, are experiencing certain symptoms. What do we know about these symptoms? We have known that patients who get severely ill with COVID-19, those that end up in the hospital, those that go to intensive care, that those patients could develop something known as post-intensive care syndrome. That syndrome has been described well before COVID in patients who've been critically ill. And so we are seeing those types of prolonged symptoms and functional limitations in patients who've been critically ill with COVID-19. That includes people who, develop, who have a persistent cough, who have a persistent shortness of breath, uh, perhaps um, some physical limitations uh, due to being uh, critically ill and in bed for a long time, uh, as well as uh, potentially cognitive uh, issues um, as well after um, being so sick. And so we are concerned uh, about that type of post-intensive care syndrome that we will see with patients after acute COVID-19 um, uh, hospitalization. There are also smaller reports, and this is something that we need to really to understand better, of patients who were not hospitalized. That means patients who were mildly ill. There is reports that those patients have continued to have some protracted symptoms, such as coughing, such as some shortness of breath, such as some trouble with breathing, um, uh, some extensive symptoms of fatigue. So there is a concern there that um, needs to be better, much better understood about for those patients that were mild and potentially without risk factors. So clearly, Janet, evidence is still coming in and we're learning more about these symptoms. How long do we know do these symptoms last? Again, it's, a, it's an excellent question, uh, but unfortunately we do not know. Um, again, we can extrapolate from the, when I was talking about the hospitalized patients, those that um, were severely ill or critically ill, spent time in intensive care. We know from studies in non-COVID patients that those critically ill can, patients may have symptoms to up to six months or even one year after that hospitalization, um, that, that post-intensive care syndrome. So that can be quite um, prolonged. Um, for those patients now that were mild, uh, that may have protracted symptoms, we really don't have enough uh, information to say how long those symptoms uh, may persist after the acute uh, illness. Janet, what do we know so far about what proportion of patients, COVID patients, get these symptoms even after recovery? So I don't have a good proportion uh, to share right now because the studies uh, that have been done are, are relatively small, so we can't generalize that to the entire population with COVID. But again, if, if I go back to the post-intensive care syndrome from what we know about patients who've been critically ill, um, with other uh, diseases, uh, and if we indirectly apply that to, to patients who have had COVID-19 and been very sick in the hospital, um, it could be up to 50% of those patients may have some, uh, some sort of functional limitation, as I described before, um, at the six-month mark. So, um, so again, we, we don't know the, the total proportion or the total numbers of, of patients um, but it is very concerning, uh, you know, with the total numbers affected with SARS-CoV-2, you know, infected, um, that, uh, that that number may be uh, relatively large. Janet, so what is the takeaway here? Well, I think the takeaway, the most important one is prevention. Uh, I think we need to continue to prevent the transmission of SARS-CoV-2 um, in order to prevent any acute infection uh, with uh, with SARS-CoV-2 or any illness uh, such as COVID-19. If we prevent the acute disease, we will not have persistent symptoms, right? So I think that's the number one. The number two is that uh, we need to understand better how, um, how many people will suffer from prolonged symptoms, uh, how many of those people are the people that will be, are from the hospital that will have the post-intensive care syndrome, um, and also how many of those people are the younger people that may have more uh, mild illness but still suffer from uh, protracted symptoms that may cause them limitations in their quality of life. Thank you, Janet. 
That was Science in 5 today. Until next time then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stick with science.